I gotta read a first, another precept. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. So I return and consider all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the fears of such as were oppressed, that they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressors there was power, but they had no comforter. I'll read that precept again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. So I return and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Solomon is saying all the oppressions that are done under the sun. That's what he said he's seen serving upon horses. Because why? The wicked bear fruit. The wicked who prospers in the world. That's why you're supposed to be angry here as an Israelite man. As every Israelite man is supposed to be upset. Because the world is supposed to be ours. So how is the heathen ruling over us? But Jake have a carefree attitude, man. Jake don't care, man. That's why he says what? So I return and consider all the oppressions that are done under the sun. The system itself is against you, Jake. Okay? I look at that documentary day. You have Jake sitting in prison over these uh, non-violent crimes, man. I think, you know, selling grams of weed or whatever, but sitting in prison for five, six months waiting for a trial. See? Some crimes they didn't do, but they wanted them to cop out and take the plea. That's oppression, man. Okay, the odds are already stacked up against you. And that whole court system is a joke anyway. The judge, the public defendant, the prosecutor, everybody in the same. Come on, man. Everybody ain't cahoots with each other, man. All right? No matter what you jinx try to do, you're going to get pulled right back down. Okay? Because the most high set it up for you to make so I'm going to keep reading. It says, And the, the fears of such that were oppressed, and they had no comfort. In them. Okay? Now comfort is Yahweh Shah. That's the only person that can comfort you. It's through the scriptures, man. You ain't going to find comfort in money. Damn sure ain't going to find comfort in his wicked woman. You're not going to find that. Okay? The comfort is in the scriptures, man. Right? So you Jake, you try to uh, get drugged up, drunk, okay? Because why, man? You're looking for something to comfort your spirit. Only this book. It says what? And on the side of the oppressors, there was power. Why? Because Esau, the Most High, gave him the planet Earth. That's why it says what? But they had no comfort of it. So the prophets are mourning and crying all the time. And Solomon was a rulership when he wrote this. But why? He knew that the wicked was somehow um, rule again. Until the kingdom come, man. Matter of fact, Ezra's every read second Ezra 6. Before I jump back on. Make sure this is on. Second Ezra chapter six. Uh, 
Matthew 6, verse. Stop, Esther's belt. Second Ezra 6, 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come ye all, and the people whom thou also have chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh Shah, because thou madest the world for our sin. As for the other people, started with Esau, aka the white man, who was a nation. Alright? As for the other people, thou hast said that they are nothing. Isaiah 40, 17. But be like unto spittle spit, and as like in the abundance of them as a drop that falleth from the vessel. Okay? A drop of water that falleth from the bucket. That's how the most high looks at the even. And now, O Yahweh Shikyal Shah, behold these even, which were ever re reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. The wicked man. The wicked bear fruit. Jake got so used to the oppression, man. That's why the most side will get rid of two thirds of y'all, man. That's why it says Jeremiah 2.14. Because you had Jake, you know, always go crazy every July the 4th. Because why? Wow, you're used to being oppressed. Not the prophets, man. It's starting to wear. It's starting to wear and tear on you, man. Okay? That's why this shit got to end. Got to end. Jeremiah 2.14. Says, is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? That's the question the Most High asks. Are you a home-born slave? You Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans? No, but you acting like it. What? Read again. Jeremiah two fourteen. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? Why we keep going in slavery and captivity? Why are we at the bottom? It's the question that the prophets were asking, man. Why, man? And I'm going to read, a matter of fact, I may have to go back to Ezra's. Matter of fact, Solomon even said, you get Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. It says, A good name, you know, verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning, which is this truth. Because this house, this is the house of mourning. Hey, you learned the good part, which I'm going to read. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that. the house of mourning which is this knowledge than to go to the house of feasting and that's all our people go to is the house of feasting now we're not telling you to walk walk with your head down every single day of the week we're not saying that we're not saying that obviously it's a balance in this thing okay but yeah you're supposed to be feeling it man okay that's why it says what it's better to go to the house of mourning, which is this knowledge, because this is the house of mourning, okay, than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. That house of feasting, pleasure, joy, okay, that, that carefree attitude. The scripture says that's the end of all men. It says, and the living will lay it to his heart. So this is the house of mourning. To prove that, Revelation 10 and 10. Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth. Sweet as honey. 
you read on. And I took the little book, this book, this Bible, same thing like Ezekiel, out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. When you first learn this knowledge, it is sweet as honey. Because you learn about the kingdom, you know, the, the, the things that we're going to have in the kingdom, power, rulership, glory, everlasting, um, incorruptible bodies, okay, everlasting life. You're going to have everything. Give, the Lord is going to give you to your heart's desire. That's the sweet part. Knowing that Esau is the devil, Yahweh Shai and Yahweh of black men, the angels, the Allahayim. That's the sweet part. America's destruction. But he said, What? Sweet as honey, as soon as I'd eaten it, but my belly was bitter. bitter. But my belly was bitter. As soon as you start digesting, you start staying in this truth for a while, you start getting bitter, man. That's why. You start seeing the wickedness. You start feeling it, man. The constant battles that you have with these people in your mind, the main enemy is yourself. Like the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, he had to keep his flesh under subjection, or else he himself would be a castaway. Okay? Head is, you know, you're the top vessel on the earth, but you're being ruled over by these dogs. That in itself is oppression. Okay? You see the wicked prospering. Matter of fact, let me get Psalm 73, verse 3. I'll show you how the prophets felt, man. Psalm 73, verse 3. Psalm chapter 73, verse 3. This is King David. He said, What? For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Read that again. He's speaking in the spirit. Psalm 73, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish. This is Asaph. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, man. The wicked prosperous. Okay, these wicked niggas prosper, man. Now the most I starting to get you celebrities, man. Kalai Haba Shinyal Shah. It's about time. Our niggas start dropping the head. Wicked niggas, man, that's sold out. Dealing with all kind of witchcraft. And Satanism, man. Like that XX nigga, man. That's how the most high got you good. Alright? He says what? For as envy said the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked man. Are the wicked always prosperous? Okay? But that's about to stop, man. Okay? Both sides about to cast down the wicked man. Jesus said you saw perish away like his own dumb. But we gotta wait on Yahweh by Shinyao Shah. See, all the prophets were what waited, man. Okay? That's why Jeremiah even said, let me get Jeremiah. How did Jeremiah feel? Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 13. Make sure this plane because my battery low. All right. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 13. How you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Not bad, you? All right. All right. We can be here until around three ish. Yeah, yeah. We'll be out here probably before that. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse, let me see, 20, verse 13. Okay, it's time to push this word. It's time to finish the word, man. Oh, the elders been telling brothers to, to push the word, man. You're supposed to be doing that anyway, man. Now it's time to finish, man. Okay? Because we don't got that much time left. See, I told that uh, sister earlier, you know, the clock is ticking. You know, we're not going to get in time fast. 
get mad and scream at Jay. We ain't doing that no more. Because either you get it or you get put to death. Plain and simple. And all these people here, you see, they're going to be in body bags, man. Okay? They're going to be meat for the fowls of heaven. These vultures, man. That's what's gonna happen, man. Read Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 13. Get up, scriptures. Get, 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 get up. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse. Let me see. Like Jeremiah 2014, that's what the prophet Jeremiah said. And this cuts your birthday too, man. This cuts that, man. Celebrating your birthday, man. That's going off. Man. Okay, that's vanity. Jeremiah 2014. Curse be the day wherein I was born, but not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. That cuts that, man. That's why Job kids got taken away, because they were into that. Alright? Jeremiah said, curse that day, man. Okay? Because why? Wow, we're not in our kingdom. That is the point. Man. It says, um, Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Let that man be as the city which Jehovah Shemel shall overthrew. Repent it not, and let them hear the cry in the morning and the shout in that noonday. Okay? Because he slew me not from the womb. Or that my mother might have been my grave or her womb to be always great with me. Wow, that's Jeremiah was in the spirit, man. <laughs> you know, Jeremiah said he should have been slain from the womb, man. So the prophets, they hated their lives, man. Okay? They were always angry. They was always depressed, man. Okay, that's the true mannerisms of a true man of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Well, you think a lot of them psalms, that's King David complaining in the spirit. Okay, because he had enemies about him round about. The Philistines, his own son, Absalom. He had to battle the house of Saul. He had to battle these other nations. Constantly enemies, man. Round about. But the Most High delivered him out of them all. And we want the mercies of King David, man. Because King David, even though he was a man after the Heavenly Father's own heart, he committed sins. Okay, but he kept what? He endured to the end. He acknowledges iniquity and he kept pushing. That's why the scripture says, let not thy sins weigh you down. Let me read Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto their death. Who they're talking about? The elect. The elect love that love not their lives unto death. So that's why I just did that video to the Spirit of by Shemel Shah on this whole July the fourth. Okay. You're supposed to be sighing and crying continually. Okay, because we're being shorthanded right now. Okay. We want this kingdom, man. That's what Yahweh Shai told the disciples to go ye out to the highways and hedges. And he said, go ye out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and let them know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Your kingdom is at hand. You read on, man. It says, um, we get John 16, 33. Okay, we can't wait for shit to start hitting the fan, man. And this lunar eclipse, that's a major sign. A major sign from the heavens, which the majority of these people don't even know about. Because their eyes are not open, right? John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me he might have peace. Yahushua is not here, but he sent us what? The comforter. This word, man. That's how we have peace. And you, you listen to the Akim, you listen to the elders. It builds up your spirit, man. Okay? When the word is being taught the right way. 
That's the company. That's Yahweh Shai company. All right. It says John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me he might have peace. In the world he shall have tribulation. There you go. The Lord told you in the world you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have sorrow. You're going to have pain. You're going to have anguish. You're going to have depression. Okay? You read about the different prophets of the Lord felt the same way. Their whole thing was, when are you going to bring the end? But well, we in the end right now. Okay? So we should be rejoicing, man. Just waiting for that microchip, man. Just waiting for that, man. Or whatever major event they got planned. So I believe they probably might do something in the fall, man. Something about that fall, Esau like doing his thing. Okay, most economic collapses happen in the fall. Most major terrorist attacks happen in the fall. You know, but you got to be on your watch regardless. You read it, John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me he might have peace. In the world he shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Yahweh Shai overcame the world. Okay? And the scripture says that you're conquerors through Yahweh Shai. You get flipped with Romans 8, 37, this is spirit. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, man. Okay? There you go, man. We're conquerors. And the spirit led me right to that on uh, uh, page, man. That's the Allah I am. That's the angels, man. Okay? You know, like somebody said, uh, good video. Nah, brother, it's, that's Yahweh Shemiah Al Shah speaking to us, man. Matter of fact, I'm going to read that scripture, man. Everything we do is already preordained. And the angels control everything. In fact, we read that. John chapter 14. Verse 10. It said, Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Man. So the Father controls everything. Man. He doeth the works. If you're a false prophet, you're set up by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. To prove that, we read Ezekiel 14 and 9. Go well, prove that, man. Prove all things. Ezekiel 14 and 9. If a prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, Yahweh Yahushai, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people. That's scary. Most I said, if there's a false prophet, I deceive him, and I'm going to destroy him. And if you're a man of the Lord, guess what? You were set up. Because, like Yahweh Shai said, it's not me, it's the Father that worked with him. He doeth the works. That's what the angel, that's what the Lord got angels around you for a reason. Matter of fact, I'm gonna read it. Psalms 34, verse 7. Angels play a vital role in this thing, man. Vital man. They just don't gotta protect, they put thoughts in your brain. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Psalms 34, verse 7. angel of the Lord, Yehavah Shemiah Shah, encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Matter of fact, no, that's not it. There's another Psalms 91. Psalms 91. 101 is the Psalms 91. Psalms 91 and 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. How does the angels keep you in the ways of the Lord? By putting thoughts in your brain. Okay, and even Esau knows that. That's why in the sitcoms, he got angels on the right and demons on the left telling the character what to do and what not to do. That's how it plays out in the spiritual realm. 
And it's a good prayer to say too that the Most High give His angels charge over you to keep you in His ways, man. Okay? Sometimes you don't even remember a precept and the angels just put certain thoughts in your brain and you bring it out to the Spirit. It's not you who did that. It's the angels, man. Psalms 91 and 11. Let's read that again. For He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And that's how the angels, they keep brothers in a ways he how about Shemel Shah. Right? And you gotta remain humble. Because the most I can let that uh that guardian angel turn into your death angel, man. Flip the script on you, man, and get you out of there, man. That's what you gotta fear the Lord, man. And these people that come up against us, they mock the death. Okay? Yahweh Shai said that in Matthew the 18th chapter. Yeah, Matthew 18 and 10. It's flowing in the spirit, man. Wherever the spirit leads, we're going we to... We're just getting to that blue eclipse. My camera hold up, my phone hold up. We'll get to it. Matthew 18 and 10. So the Lord said, for you, you scoffers, it says what? It says we are the angels. Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven the angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Those angels behold the face of the Father. They report directly to the Father. Okay? So they report to the Father, our enemies and adversaries, what you think the Most High going to do to you, man? Especially if you're part of the elect. You won't find out. Like I always said before, people look at us like we're just average men. You're sadly mistaken. The ship says, our angels, what we hold the face of the Father. Okay? Spirit, man. If you read that, then. All right. So, all, like I said, all praise Yah, my Shemel Shah. We could have just been an average nigga, bugged out in the world. It's in Acts twenty-eight. Let me see. It's all. Acts 27. Except I wanted, I read that in a minute. Oh, here we go. This is spirit. Acts 27, verse. Stop verse 1. That's when the storm started arising. Acts chapter 27. 
verse 7. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over, called us, the wind not suffering us, we sailed on a critique over against Salmone. And hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the, F the Fair Heavens, nigh where towards the city of Lycia. And when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast had now also passed, Paul admonished them, which was also known as the Day of Atonement, to show you that they were keeping it in the New Testament. I said unto them, Sir, I perceive that this voyage will be with her. So Paul is telling them, and much damage not only of the land and of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. More than Paul. And because the heaven was not commodus to winter in, the more part advised the part thence, also if any means they might attain to Venus, and there to winter, which is in heaven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. Let's read on to the point, man. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loose and thence they sailed close to Crete. But not long after these arose against it a temperous wind called Euroclitus. Same with how you name hurricanes today. This one was called what? Euroclitus, man. And when the ship was caught and could not bear it up in the wind, we let her drive and run it through under a certain island which is called Clauda, which had much work to be the boat, which when they had taken up, these used helps undergirding the ship and fearing they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. In fact, let's see if I can jump to the point. Yeah, I'll read now to 23. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Man, Paul was catching hell, man. And the guy, if he had just listened to the Apostle Paul, this wouldn't have happened. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. So they thought this was it. I'll show you how important this is though. How important uh, the men of the Lord are. But after long accidents, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Keti, but to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the Most High, whose I am and whom I serve. So the angel, Paul's angel, is the one that kept them from being put to death, man. I read, I read that precept in a minute. But that's the spirit, man. Yeah, that's the spirit of Yahweh Shemel Shah. Read the next precept. earlier, we're not just normal men, man. Our angels behold the face of the most high. Like I was going to earlier, ain't nothing to celebrate about in this place. Nothing. Nothing, man. What did they say in that prayer I just read earlier? He said the most godless of the evil. Esau. And the Most High is about to allow you, Jake, to be taken by Esau, man. That's why, matter of fact, let me see if it's at 40. I'm going straight into that purge, man. We run more precept and then I'm going to jump. Yeah, man, like I said, 
like I was saying. The most high is about to um to lock it for that. Long day, man. But still gotta do this work, man. Alright? Matter of fact, let me read that second Corinthians 11 chapter. Before I jump into the next segment. Oh, this battery, hold up. Second Corinthians 11. It says, For if he suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smile on the face, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, how be it? Were in so much any is bold. It's to the scriptures? Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. It says, um, I speak as reproach as though we have been weak, albeit, where so much any is bold. I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of the Mashiach? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes. Paul said he would get his getting beat up. Above measure in prisons more frequent in deaths off. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, three times. Once I was stoned, he did get killed. I think that's Acts 14 chapter. The most I put the spirit back in. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. We just read it. A night and a day have I been in the deep, and in journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, and robbed, in perils of my own countrymen. They wanted to kill him, okay, when he went back to Jerusalem. In perils of the heathen, in perils of the sea, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils at them unto rent. So what are we going through is nothing here, man. And wearing some of painfulness. Watching often in hunger and in thirst and fasting and in cold and in nakedness. Catching hell. Beside those things that are without, which come in upon me daily for the care of all churches. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? Am I not burned out? Burned not? So Paul said he was burned out, man was weak, man, for the care of the church, to edify you, brothers and sisters, man. That's why Paul said what he said. Let me get one more precept, and I'm going to see if I jump to the next segment. It was flowing in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. Second Timothy 2 and 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is Yahweh Shai Mashiach, 
eternal glory, man. All things, man. 